So, um, yeah, I'll stay here. Um, and uh, first of all, I really want to uh, thank um, Karin and Ido for uh, convening this uh, wonderful, um, promises to be, uh, great um, seminar, workshop, conference. Uh, and a uh, wonderful opportunity for all of us to get readjusted to meeting people and to uh, being face to face and uh, being able to, to, to engage in a, a dialogue uh, in an academic setting. It's, uh, it, it's, really, it's really great, so I, I truly appreciate it. Um, so um, you can see that my uh, topic is um, non-state marriages in Israel within the global marriage debate and like um, uh, every, um, I think, interesting uh, research idea, it started with um, something more personal, um, kind of a personal experience for me when um, some years ago I was approached by um, a number of uh, young couples, um, students, former students, um, children of friends, who wanted to consult with me on the possibility of having a wedding ceremony outside the auspice of the state rabbinic. Now, um, in order for us, all of us, to be on the very uh, same page right from the beginning, I should just clarify that there is no civil marriage and divorce in Israel. The only way to marry in Israel is through each and everyone's religion, and each um, person in Israel has a religion into which he or her were born into, those who are, have uh, their religion in doubt is a separate uh, problematic case, which we won't discuss uh, today. I'll just mention them uh, afterwards in, in passing. But uh, the thing is that there's, uh, the, as I said, the only official recognized uh, way, um, formally speaking, um, to be married in Israel is through uh, religious marriages. And this means that religious law um, controls not only the substance of the um, marital institute and institution and the, uh, uh, and the marriage and divorce laws, but also the form, the procedure, the way to marry is through, only through uh, those um, state recognized um, uh, officiants, um, uh, religious uh, clerics, uh, and for uh, Jews, that means only male Orthodox rabbis. Um, so, um, uh, putting this in uh, the back of our minds, um, going back to these uh, young couples who um, um, turned to me as a, a person who um, um, researches uh, family law in Israel and also as somebody who is coming from the uh, uh, religious uh, background, the uh, observant um, uh, community, uh, Jewish community in, in Israel, um, and it struck me that they are actually joining what appears to be a growing trend of people who conduct weddings, um, wedding ceremonies outside the uh, state rabbinate, and uh, uh, I'll We'll start with uh, 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 some uh, pictures to um, show uh, what you see here is what to, to outsiders would look like uh, probably any regular uh, wedding in, in Israel. Um, however, um, looking at the next picture, you already see that uh, the two married people are two uh, men, and this would obviously not be recognized by uh, a state-recognized uh, uh, marriage. No religious clerk would um, uh, marry them. Um, and you, you can see uh, these same uh, wonderful, wonderful um, kids again. They're good friends of my of my son. Uh, went to the same uh, yeshiva, um, higher uh, religious uh, 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 training uh, body in. in Israel, and I'm emphasizing this because this means that um, these couples, uh, like many, many others, are uh, still religiously committed people who nevertheless uh, sought for this uh, opportunity, this uh, way of uh, go around the state-recognized uh, religious uh, marriage. And, and lastly, um, the last picture, I want to emphasize what probably was not uh, very apparent uh, before, um, that in many of these weddings, uh, the people who officiate them, who conduct them, are women. 
And again, this is not something which is uh, plausible uh, through the uh, state-recognized uh, system. Um, the, the, the center that I'm uh, having at bar -Ilan University, the Rackman Center, uh, now has an ongoing appeal in front of the um, High Court of Justice in Israel to allow for women to officiate marriages as part of the state-recognized uh, system. Um, so, so, um, uh, so, so this is the, the, the background for, uh, my, for my research. Um, as I said, the increasing number of, uh, of couples who conduct their marriages um, uh, outside the uh, state, uh, the state um, uh, rabbinate, um, private marriages as we sometimes refer to them. Um, and it occurred to me that this really happens um, within the growing uh, challenges to state-regulated marriages uh, in, in the global north. And the question was, um, is it part of the same trend? What does it reflect? Is it similar or how is it similar? How is it different from the global marriage debate? And what I want to do today is talk a little more about, um, explain uh, my own uh, research, which is uh, combined with both empirical research uh, with a political scientist um, uh, and a theoretical legal uh, research and to talk about what I think should be the parameters if we want to engage in understanding a local phenomena within a more global uh, phenomena. Uh, so going back to the unique Israeli case, um, as I said, no civil marriage and divorce, but I should also point here uh, to make things a little more complex uh, if they're not complicated enough uh, already, is the fact that uh, marriages, even if conducted privately, but if they follow the religious precepts of the specific religion, then strictly, legally speaking, they would be recognized as valid, not only by the applicable religious law, but also by the state. So I'm not going to delve into this point in this presentation today, but this, this is another venue of my theoretical framework talking about the different layers of legitimacy and state recognition, right? What does it mean when uh, this marriage, again, strictly speaking, is recognized, is valid, however, Perhaps it is even forbidden. There is a criminal legislation that criminalizes conduct the conduct of private marriages in Israel. So this is a very intricate legal situation, but again, it's uh, uh, sidetracking from uh, my presentation uh, today. Um, the monopoly of both the substantive religious law and the state, the fact that only state recognized um, uh, official uh, uh, religious officials can conduct the marriages, obviously um, c creates a lot of hardships uh, for many people or many levels. There are those who are simply ineligible to marry under religious laws, um, whether it is due to internal um, uh, impediments, restrictions on the uh, possibility to marry, like uh, Kohanim, um, uh, those who belong to the uh, Kohanic um, uh, chain within uh, Jewish law with divorcee or with uh, 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 people of, or with uh, converts. Um, interfaith, interreligious marriages are not possible under most uh, religious laws um, uh, in, 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 in Israel. Um, obviously, um, same-sex marriages are not uh, possible. Um, and, and I could go on to describe more uh, groups uh, that experience hardships on, uh, due to this uh, monopoly. And then obviously there are those who simply do not want to have religion um, um, supersede and, 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 and supervise uh, their most intimate relationships um, entering into marriage and then uh, uh, regulate uh, the ongoing uh, marital relationships. And then there is that most fascinating group um, whom we saw before, those people who are observant and who do follow religious uh, doctrines and, and, and laws, but they object to the uh, control of the um, formal orthodox male rabbinate in Israel. Some are conservative, some are reform, some are orthodox, 
maybe they would not be viewed as orthodox from people within inside orthodoxy, but again, this is a subject for another uh, discussion. So all these groups are seeking ways to uh, subterfuge, to, to go around these uh, restrictions, these substantive and procedural uh, impediments on we should face it on access to marriage, access to the institution of marriage uh, in Israel. As expected, the um, uh, uh, secular uh, legal system, uh, civil legal system in Israel has been forming ways to go around these uh, hardships and these uh, uh, impediments to overcome the religious monopoly. And I'm using uh, June Carbone's and Nomi Khan's uh, methodology of uh, uh, referring to opt-out regimes and to opt-in uh, regimes. And in Israel, the opt-out regime of de facto relations, uh, cohabitants, people who live together without marrying, the non-marriage, as um, uh, June and Nomi uh, call it, is one of the, probably the widest recognized system um, in, in the world. Uh, Shachal here um, and others have been uh, writing a lot uh, about that. Uh, and this recognition obviously includes uh, same-sex uh, couples. And it's um, really recognizing these relationships almost as identical to formal marriages, uh, bestowing um, uh, protections and benefits, and recognizing also internal obligations within the couple vis-a-vis -vis, uh, each other. The only difference, well, I shouldn't say the only difference, but the main difference is that um, they are not registered as married. Um, but there is no domestic, no opt-in oh, no, sorry, no opt um, regime in Israel. Um, there is partially for a very small group, and it's really not worth um, going into that. Basically, there is no system of registered partnerships or civil unions or domestic partnerships, whatever you call them in other uh, countries um, in, in Israel. However, there is a scheme of people who conduct civil marriages out of Israel, uh, mostly in Cyprus, but not only in Cyprus, um, and come <coughs> back to Israel and then register their marriages within the uh, population registry. And according to the Supreme Court, um, precedent setting cases from the uh, uh, late 50s, um, they are recognized for almost all purposes. They are registered as married, and practically speaking, they are Again, almost the same as um, uh, those who formally marry uh, according to the religious law in, in Israel. So this would seem as a solution to the problem. But two points here. First of all, it does, I mean, these two ways, they do offer pragmatic solutions and they ease the distress, but in fact, they allow the continuation of the religious monopoly they allow the continuation of the status quo. And it is still not a satisfactory solution for many. And many of those who do not find these solutions as satisfactory are opting for the bottom-up um, development of non-state marriages. So the slide before talked about the top-bottom solutions. Now I'm uh, talking about the bottom-up development, the process of non-state uh, marriages. And going back to the pictures that we saw in the beginning of my presentation, um, there is an increasing number of those privately conducted uh, wedding ceremonies. And um, my research, um, the first phase of the research, was um, an empirical research conducting interviews with 40, um, 40 couples who choose Jewish couples who choose to marry outside the official state rabbinate, meaning they are eligible to marry within the system yet they choose to conduct those private marriages outside the system. And one of the things that we were curious to find out is their reasons and motivations, and unsurprisingly, uh, the reasons really vary. From challenging the um, uh, male exclusive authority, orthodox authority over uh, the conduct of marriage, uh, from seeking more egalitarian forms of entering into uh, marriage. Some also connect this to challenging the marriage industry um, in Israel, like in many other parts of the world, which has become enormously, enormously expensive and, and consumerism uh, 
culture, um, and there are many, many more uh, motivations. And likewise, they conduct various forms of wedding ceremony. Some, according, really follow the uh, religious precepts um, uh, and, and all the parameters that need to be in existence within the marriage ceremony in order for it to be valid religiously. And some purposefully um, uh, uh, make sure not to have it uh, a valid religious uh, marriage, and there are many reasons for, for that. I'll just add that um, uh, we are now also conducting supplementary research on same-sex couples who, unlike the previous group, do not have a choice and are unable to marry uh, in, uh, within the official system uh, in Israel. But when I want to um, uh, engage in this uh, comparison of, um, of, of where all this um, fits in or, 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 or how it is um, uh, corresponds or interacts with um, the um, global phenomena of, the, of, the, of challenging uh, to state-regulated marriages, I um, think that we should uh, always look at to um, which groups are leading the battle in each, in each country and what impediments are they seeking to overcome, what barriers are they uh, seeking to overcome uh, through the uh, marriage uh, debate or the marriage battle? And then also what is the normative, the legal framework within which the, the, they are conducting the battle? In other words, what, is the, what are the options? What are the opt-in or opt-out regimes in each of these, um, in each of these um, uh, arenas? And um, uh, very, very interestingly, um, who are the actors who participate in the debate? Um, what are their motivations? Which ideologies or, or, or political um, standpoints they, they come from? Um, and very um, broadly speaking, and this is really a very, very broad sketch of comparison between the United States and the uh, and United Kingdom, um, England, uh, uh, Scotland, and Wales, um, what we can see are, um, I think that at, at first blush, it seems like, I said before, the global marriage debate, but there are vast differences between the, um, the actors and the ways that the debates is ongoing uh, in the United States and in the UK. Uh, in the United States, the leading, leading the battle is obviously the battle for um, uh, marriage equality, uh, for same sex to uh, enter the institution of uh, marriage and the Uber uh, decision uh, was um, in, made in 2015. Uh, some would say that the Dobbs decision um, now uh, um, uh, uh, risks the um, uh, upholding of uh, Obergefell. Some would say that it's the other way around because uh, legislators will now uh, make sure to um, actually enshrine it in, in legislation. But again, this is a, a subject for another discussion. Um, but 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 they're really they've been uh, controlling the debate in the United States, which is totally different from the United Kingdom. Um, for some reason, and I would love to hear people's um, ideas about um, uh, the reason. Behind that, the, the, the battle for marriage and quality in the UK was uh, much um, low, more low key than in the United States. And what preoccupies the uh, discussion in the United Kingdom is those private weddings conducted by religious communities, um, mostly Muslims, but not only Muslims, and also non religious communities, such as the humanists who seek to have recognition of their own uh, private uh, marriages. Oh, wow, okay. Um, and, uh, okay, I won't go into explaining the differences between the opt-in and opt-out regimes. You, you can see them here, and I'll be happy to send you the, uh, the slides. Uh, but to summarize, the debate in the United States focuses on the substantive impediments, the access to the institution itself, and the debate in, and the battles in the UK um, uh, focus on the procedural impediments, the challenging to the form of entry. Now there is the whole um, area of the theoretical discussion. Who are the key players within the theoretical discussion of the marriage debate? And I purposefully put in brackets, is it a global debate or is it only an American, US marriage debate? 
Um, and uh, of course, this is a, a whole uh, discussion for a whole other presentation, comparing the arguments of the classical feminists or comparing com uh, contemporary feminists such as uh, Martha Feynman um, to the uh, arguments of uh, um, moving to the right, liberal progressives. Um, both see the um, uh, institution of marriage as archaic, as patriarchal, anachronistic, um, and I'm not sure whether to place maybe, uh, where's Brian? Uh, I'm not sure if I should place you within the liberal progressives, and I'm not sure whether I should place uh, Michael within the uh, religious autonomist or multiculturalist, um, but uh, there are fascinating um, uh, comparisons between all, the, all, all, all of them and their liber libertarians, um, like Senator Rand Paul um, arguing for uh, taking the state out of the marriage uh, altogether, um, and then the religious reactionists um, who post Obergefell um, joined the libertarians, thus making uh, what we often uh, refer to as a strange uh, bedfellows. Um, so again, uh, there is a whole lot to, to say here. Going back to the Israeli case, I would just uh, conclude by um, um, explaining that it does present us with a case of a combination of both impediments uh, on substance and form. And initial findings um, show that the couples are actually not seeking to revolutionize the actual institution of marriage and more than half of them remain within the opt-out regime that is being recognized as de facto, and they do not seek to add the registration of their marriages to those uh, by, by going, uh, by, by having a civil marriage out of Israel and then being registered as married, and they're, so, so they remain within the privately uh, conducted wedding, Thus, they are prepared to forego the ultimate aspect of legal legitimacy, which is the registration of their status, as long as they are guaranteed the other aspects of the legal legitimacy and they have the social legitimacy, which is what the most important thing that they're seeking. That, that's what we uh, found out in, in, our, in our research, or one of the things that we found out in the research. And do we, can we learn from it to, um, uh, uh, to, uh, applicable to uh, the cases beyond Israel. I think that um, uh, we can obviously say that substantive impediments on access to marriage are not exclusive to religious systems, as we saw um, civil systems, uh, which excluded same sex. Um, uh, some would say that this means that they're not really civil systems, they are also religious uh, systems. Um, but. Um, uh, uh, another point, another interesting point is that even those bottom-up social processes uh, which seem to challenge the institution may end up preserving the status quo. And finally, when rights and protections are guaranteed by venues other than that of marriage, namely the, um, uh, 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 the, the, the opt-out of regime, then the formal title no longer matters and the social legitimation takes precedence over the legal legitimation through uh, registration. And um, um, I think we can already understand that this is obviously just the beginning of uh, findings of this research and it's all to be uh, continued. Thank you very much.